Hi everyone, Trina Phoenix here, and it's time for some more Book of Secret Wisdom. This is the book that we've been reading from, and I'm super glad you guys are enjoying this because I really loved this information. When I started reading it, I was like, oh, gotta share, because this is some good stuff. So we were getting into stanza six, The Fire of Love. So, a throne of angels was whirling around, blessed the souls that were soaring towards the light. The celebration, it seemed, would last forever. Somehow I remember this. The stanza of the fire of love. So after another, like, destruction point, rebirth point. It's like, here we go, once again, on the rounds of the wheel. The, the in-between, when we started to win in love and enlightenment started to develop into the minds of the humans, there was a celebration. And it's like nobody had a desire for war. Nobody was anxious to sow the seeds of death. Nobody wanted to return to the past. The world was advancing into the future where immortality awaited it. The focus of the fire clearly pointed to a goal that served as the starting point for those proceeding throughout eternity along the innumerable pathways of creation. Man awoke. He was beholding a new look which shone within the purple radiance of the fires. The glare of the battle of space reflected upon him, vividly testifying that he himself had been forcibly drawn into the struggle. The strife of the new fires with the moribund chaotic whirlwinds and currents of evil were flaring up directly beside man, peering into his eyes. The bright tongues of flame queried, will you continue along the path of darkness or will you join with the ranks of the warriors of the light? No one could stand apart since everything was enveloped by the flame. Many could not see the fire, for he was invisible. Many did not feel the intensity of his scorching, for he was holy. Many simply did not believe in his existence, unwilling to open their eyes to the true state of things. But life herself put everybody in place drawing a strict line between the light and the darkness. <clears throat> People, without knowing it, had already bored the seal of death or the seal of immortality upon their foreheads. That's amazing. Wow. Oh, I lost my place. That rocked me so bad, I completely lost my place. Okay. So people without even knowing it already bore the seal of death or immortality on their foreheads. They no longer belonged to themselves as they were now subject to the govern governing laws of the universe. Whoa. So the seal... It bonds you to this universe because it says once they had the seal upon their forehead, they no longer belonged to themselves as they were now subject to the governing laws of the universe. Rubbish was being swept away into the eighth sphere allotted to it so that the feet of pilgrims on the path to evolution would no more be wounded by thorns. Everyone had a specific destiny awaiting them, 
and all were willing or unwillingly advanced towards it. Wow. The joy of flight awaited those who arrayed in a fiery suit of armor took the sword of all triumphant love in their hands and sided with the light. Wow. The joy of flight awaited those who arrayed in a fiery suit of armor and took the sword of all triumphant love in their hands and sided with the light. That's powerful. I've seen my sword. That's, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> the legion of love was advancing and nobody was capable of withstanding it. For nothing in the world could equal the mighty transformative power of love. Love, she was shield and armor, sword and the rose of the world. Love, she was the only law. Entitled to subordinate all existing norms and rules to herself. Love, she was always right because she comes from the heart that blazes with the fire of the divine wisdom. Love waits. She waits for everyone, patiently loyal to all who come to her. She prepares everyone a generous gift. And one who comes to her receives one's own little touch of warmth, a treasure that cannot be gauged by any measure. Love cannot be betrayed. She does not brook treachery, nor is she ever fickle towards those whom she loves. She is fiercely obedient to her own underwritten law. To love and her love is eternal. The immortal currents have spread themselves over the earth as though a covering and oh as through a covering her with two winged hands and holding every cell of her earthly body in a warm embrace everything is immersed in love there is not even the slightest chink the darkness can use to squeeze in her wicked icy coldness the roots of evil have been cut off and no longer can grow in the soil, now enveloped by the flames of love. Like a mighty hurricane, a giant clot of darkness still advances, attempting to strike its roots deep into the human minds. The tree of evil must feed on the affluence of Odysseus thoughts, but their numbers are growing less and less. The tree is withering for lack of nourishment. Therefore, every man from whom can be extracted at least one drop of venom is important, for it is precisely the food craved by the tree of evil, and the slightest drop can poison all that surrounds it. It would then unfurl every leaf from which the poisonous current could steep into the world. That tree, what, that tree was indeed grown by a dark sorcerer, who fashioned its crown from a twisted rattlesnake and its leaves were forked tongues and dripping venom. The tree of evil was to absorb all the good and change it into evil, poisoning the world with its venomous affluent and anger, anger and hatred. Love had deprived the tree of its roots. She had charred the long poisonous tongue of the darkness and tamed the ruler, the whole empire of evil. He was taken into custody, deprived of their lord and master. The servants of gloom pressed on alone, attempting to get through the soil that had nurtured them. But the charred roots were even more sharply scorched by the sizzling soil. Evil understood that his last resort could be only man, the human being. Suddenly, a sultry midday appeared the sun released a new sheaf of rays, which spilled instantly into the regions of space surrounding the earth. The warriors of love inhaled the currents deeply, thus magnifying 
their light-bearing force. They were helping people save themselves under the shield of love from the beast that had gone mad with fury and who had tangled a ball of venomous snakes and was rushing through space in search of blood-stained victims. Only the seal of love upon one's forehead could prevent the beast from thrusting its lethal stinger into man. The seal upon one's forehead was the only thing that could stop the beast from, from thrusting its lethal stinger into man. Man had to love to save himself. He was loved by the whole world and was therefore obliged to give back to the world in kind. With new foresight, man realized that the darkness would cast him out after suckling out all blood and bile, for she herself was doomed. She could not give her, he could not give her a chance to take root in himself and was thus endeavoring to maintain his thoughts in the light. The smallest vile or unkind thought would at once attract the darkness. The raven and raven and ravenous for the slightest crumb it tried. Accustomed to devouring lavish food, she was starving. Her insatiable belly had grown immeasurably bloated by the effluence of humanity's worthless, spiteful thought. Now humanity was refusing to feed the monster by which it had reared by its own hands. The mind was aglow with thoughts of light, and the food it offered could not be digested by the darkness. She singled her gaping jaws, losing her appetite. Finally, humanity brewed the precise mixture it needed. Henceforth, it was nourished by the light. Time in all its glory was placed, fires, at all intervals around the earth, allowing none of the lighthouses lit by the gods to ever be extinguished. Each one maintained a steady flame. This is like the eternal flame, all the flame stuff, this is coming from this. All the spiteful attempts to blow it out made it flare up even more strongly. In all her efforts to extinguish it, darkness was only rekindling the flame thereby serving the cause of the light. Realizing the darkness had been serving the light drove the Lord of gloom into a fitful rage. He was alone. His servants went mad. They kept chasing the beacons, trying to lure them into the other sides, little knowing that obsessed by their pursuit, they, the servants of gloom, themselves ended up pursuing the pathway of light. <laughs> Everything goes backwards, see? <laughs> Bewitching with his array of dazzling colors, the fire welcomed everyone who had set themselves upon the light-bearing path. Scintillating rays of the divine love were now piercing through, banishing the stifling, mustery spirit of anger. It was easy and pleasant to rest in the rays of the merciful, all-forgiving love. Darkness was melting as she lost her cold alienation. Rejected by everybody and desperate for warmth, the darkness was allured and attracted by the light. Standing at the edge of the fatal abyss, she was offered the light of salvation, and she was avidly absorbing it, dissolving her blackness in the radiant colors of the warm solar day. Enthroned in the fiery white core of the blazing sun, love reigned supreme. Meanwhile, the earth was preparing a throne for her in its heart. <laughs> she was endeavoring with all her might to fill her own heart with the fire and to the love and to love as powerfully and purely as did the fire. Love herself had been waiting for that moment, directing all her tenderness and all her currents into the flaming womb of the earth. Love is everywhere. Love is in everything. When she comes to one place, she does not leave another. 
She is capable of being at one, at the same time in every drop of the boundless ocean of eternity and in every earthly speck of dust. She never abandons anybody unless she is chased out by a pitiless hand. And wherever she, though exiled, insulted, and abased, is called upon once again, she will return and got gladly shine in her rightful place, not blaming anyone for anything. All she knows is that she was called, even if obliged to take on a loving step backward yesterday. Love will take two steps forward tomorrow, and man will never enter into the kingdom of light, never more again to lose it in his heart. The fire of love. The gods knew what that was. They were full of that love, which is still incomprehensible to the earthly beings. And the gods aspired to share her generous pouring the flame, her generous, her generous generosity and generously pouring the flame of the crowned spirit into the living hearts. Wow. The gods aspired to share her generously pouring the flame of the crowned spirit into the living hearts. The crowned spirit. Corona. Interesting. But humanity had just begun to study the alphabet of the fires for the first time hardly touching upon those things shining above. Just a handful of individuals had absorbed the needed knowledge, managed to break free the earthly bonds and move forward on the path of love. So the gods turned their attention to them, to all who thirsted to fathom the new currents of the universe. The gods strove to produce their own image and likeliness, and, that, and with that purpose in view, they began stretching out into new networks, along which a marvelous, scintillating love current began to flow straight from the hearts of those who were rotating the wheels of love. The birth of the gods. We will get into that one very soon, and I will bring it back to you with that. Um, wow. So the fire is what gave us the crown. And they're, they're associating the crown of fire with the alphabet of fire. And that is the fire code and the fire language given to us through the Elohim. Hmm, very interesting. I have some of these fire codes in a book and I'll probably show them to you after we get into the um, esoteric foundations of the creation of the United States of America. Not the corporation, <laughs> but the actual true America. So um, I'm just seeing all the stuff in my mind go together, and it's profound. It's this fire... more of the integration of the word within our consciousness and the power of the word through the fire, through the trinity of the fire. It's profound. So we will be getting into this, which is a very interesting next. is chapter seven, which is the number seven. Oh no, we're in chapter, this is chapter 12. The trinity, chapter 12, stanza, birth of the gods through the fire. This is making so much sense to me and how they've shown me creation. I love it so much and I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it too because I just felt with all my heart that this was so important to share because wow, it activates our memory and it helps us remember what we came from and what we've been through and what we've done through this process of evolution. And it seems to me, as I've always known, the awakening of the fire within is what we came here to do, to reconnect to the power of that trinity 
and reawaken to that holy fire and bring it through us and activate it through us and reawaken the planet. This is the same story. And, and this really puts it into perspective of how we've gone through all of these different ages and these creations and destructions. So each time we get stronger and we have more wisdom and we're holding more of this fire. This fire, it's divine fire. The divine fire is, it's that miraculous energy and it's all potential and it's connected to the water and that's why it's called holy fire it's connected to the water and they keep referencing the water so connect the skies the water and the fire are one we need to learn how to work that in our body through our water which is the emotion we activate the fire so start to wake your fire up because through love we're going to transmute the darkness into love and the child prophet told me that the rainbow warriors through their fire tongues would activate the world the rainbows around them which is the auric fields and that is the holy fire in activation it creates a light and a shield around you that can be seen instantly by darkness that's why so many of us are on the radar because we're walking in that fire and many can't see it but the ones who can, ooh, they know, they know, and they can see that fire within you. So remember guys, this is your true force of protection, and it's your force of wisdom, and it's your force of power through love. So fear not the fire, the holy fire. Jump into it, and become one with it, because this is where we come from. And this is what we are before the flesh. We are holy fire. So that fire, it's the fire of creation itself. It's based upon the orgone energy, the orgasmic ecstasy of love. So all leads, all roads of darkness seem to be leading to Rome. All roads of light will be sought and found through love. It's the absolute opposite. So we've been guided into Rome, when in all actuality, we were supposed to be being guided into light. So remember, we're here to become the light. And what creates light? Fire. I love you guys. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one, Soul Tribe. Flame on, my friends. I love you.